In this video, I'm going to put my Raspberry Pi Pico under load. I'm going to measure its performance and uh, discuss how little load is going on to the CPU cores and how much the actual hardware architecture of the Raspberry Pi Pico can actually handle. So here I've got um, a video of v a VJ output of the Pico being displayed on the screen up there. I'm measuring the performance in my application of three places where the application actually runs, which I'll take those measurements and work out how much CPU is happening on core one. Uh, core two isn't doing anything. I'm not using core two at all at this time. Uh, I've got my Z80 retro computer here running CPM. You can see CPM in the background there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a smooth scroll and while it's doing a smooth scroll, I'm going to measure the performance and also I'm going to play audio, get my Pico, which is here, to play audio at the same time as it's doing the smooth scroll. So it's under the most load that the application is doing. Also, um, on screen, on this config screen, all of these characters are being rendered individually um, using DMA as well. So I'll also switch onto that screen and then switch back. Uh, you can see the debug output of my Raspberry Pi Pico over there on my laptop and it's outputting the times how much load is in each of the three parts of the Raspberry Pi Pico program which is actually running on the CPU and if I hit the reset button that will reset the Raspberry Pi Pico CPU count to uh, to the, the, the maximum so it's measuring how much is happening in each of the program points, but it's also measuring the maximum value that's happening as well. So let's reset that back. And so as I do stuff, that will then total up the what the maximum load was. So if I start the audio playing, and start a smooth, smooth scroll, and I'll do it a couple of times as well make sure I've got maximum load and after this one I'll switch to the configuration screen and then switch back again so if I go over to the uh, configuration screen and then go back so that's rendered two screens as well and I'll take the maximum values off of the display and work out uh, what load the CPU that's being used is under. So there's three places in my code where I actually have to take timings. One's the main loop, one's the timer, and another's the VJ interrupt because they all can be triggered independently of each other. So I need to put a timing in each of those. The main loop runs once a second, so I only need to time that once for every loop time it goes around the loop. The timer occurs 40 times every second. So I need to accumulate 40 readings for how long that takes and output that as a single reading for a second. And the VJ, because it ref the refresh rate of the display is 60 hertz, so I have to measure 60 times when that runs the VJ interrupt and then accumulate that into what would be a one second interval. So this is the main loop of my application. So the, the loop is just here. And this is the code which I've inserted into each of the parts of the application I want to time. And it, I can set how many iterations I want to accumulate the value over. And it just start, measures the time it stopped there, but it measures the time it started at the bottom. So it gets the uh, difference between the time it started and when it comes into this at the end of that. And it only measures that after a period, the number of iterations at which it's gone round. So in this main loop, one iteration. In in the other ones, there's multiple iterations, and um, it just measures what the difference in time is. Now I've got minus a second because down here I've got sl the loop sleeps for a second, so it's actually doing nothing for a second. So I'm I'm removing that second from the actual time that's considered because it's, it's idle time. And then I just output onto the display what the current active period was. And I measure, I decide 
if it's greater than the last maximum time and just keep track of what whether the maximum time is and then down here it just goes into whatever I do doing the loop so in this loop I can do save in the main loop I do save configurations and wake up and sleep operations I haven't implemented the sleep operation fully yet so if I go to the VJ graphics one so this is an interrupt which occurs on at the end of displaying the information on the display in the blanking period I do stuff so that I, I'm not drawing on the screen whilst it's right into the display so that's what this interrupt's all about so I've got exactly the same code in here but in this case I'm saying over 60 iterations accumulate whatever the time difference is and I'm outputting to the display and each on each of the outputs I describe what the output is that I'm displaying the values for and that just displays exactly the same values and that what the actual code does so VJ scroll so it does the smooth scrolling once it does it sort of in the inactive period of the display uh, measures the frame uh, frames per second count as well so I can keep track and see this is actually hitting 60 frames a second as well and then the last place I do it is in the USB timer callback and um, because the tiny USB library which comes which you use in the Raspberry Pi Pico in order to, to be a USB host or a USB device it polls it doesn't use interrupts so I have to have a timer which polls the USB device uh, again doing exactly the same thing uh, this time I'm doing 40 times a second this occurs and here's the polling for the USB device and then if I've read a key during the USB device polling I process the key in this vent down here and I think back in the VGA stuff because it's doing stuff so it does process in the key so that uh, the common this one here puts the key into after it's read it from the USB device into a buffer which then gets handled during the VGA re refresh period and so it can do updates of the display at that time as well so, that, so it also does as well as scrolling update the display so if I consider the actual values I got back uh, from from the actual timings I did at the start of the video so these are some values which were on the screen at the end of the first part of the video and you can see in in its idling kind of period it's a lot less active than when I'm doing uh, changing screens and, and stuff like that so the max values is are the values I'm going to use they're the worst case scenario and they really are the worst case scenario because just because this is a max value there doesn't mean it occurred at the same time as the max value there so the value there could have been a lot lower at the time that I got the max value there so this is taking the worst case scenario and saying all those worst case scenarios occurred at exactly the same time which is very unlikely but if I do that then then it's going to be um, a decent figures you know you can't can't fault the figures then so if each each of these is microseconds so if I just consider the milliseconds I'll round it up to 12 26 30 if I go to my calculator I go 12 plus 26 plus 30 so that's um, in milliseconds. So 0 0.068 would be milliseconds uh, described as seconds. And to find out what the percentage CPU time of that is, so divided by one second because it's over a period of a second and times 100. So the CPU usage is 6.8% CPU utilization. Uh, so let's round it up to seven, say. So again, taking the worst case scenario. Uh, so CPU, so throughout that test, CPU core two was doing nothing. So that's um, under, uh, zero percent utilization on CPU core two, and seven percent utilization on CPU core one. So even though it was driving a VGA display, playing audio, and doing smooth scrolling of the well, of at least seventy percent of the display, even if it was smooth scrolling the whole of the display, it wouldn't make much difference because it's using DMA to do that. So during all of that stuff happening together, the CPU use worst case scenario was 7% utilization 
Uh, so it just shows you how powerful these Picos are if you um, utilize the DMA and the PIO uh, programmable interface because uh, that can really take a lot of load off of, of what you're doing, uh, what you're actually using the CPUs for. So I've got freely available for this particular application 100% CPU of the second CPU and over 90% CPU free of the first CPU. So what am I going to do with all that CPU use? A final thing to say about taking any, making any kind of comparisons between CPUs or microcontrollers, it's always been controversial. So when the Pentiums started getting their special multimedia instructions added and uh, like floating point instructions or you know all, all the special stuff that was added to make Pentiums faster, if you took a 200 megahertz Pentium with those uh, special instructions or 200 megahertz Pentium without those special instructions, I mean, the difference, you know, even though the clock rate was the same, it was incredibly different in the performance that you would get from those chips. So you can't use the CPU clock rate as a comparison. And that was even true back in the Z80 and 6502 days. So 6502 people would say, oh, well, it's a risk instruction set, so it's a lot quicker to, to perform instructions. And even though the 6502 was running at typically one megahertz in, in home computers and the Z80 was typically running at 3.5 megahertz. Uh, 6502 people would say, well, also, like, the Z80 is also doing a, a clock cycle to update the, the dynamic memory. And then the Z80 people would say, well, we've got much many more registers in which we can do calculations and perform operations before we have to go to memory to either read or write. So that's better in that way. And Z80 people would say, oh, well, we've got special instructions where we can actually use them to move memory around as, with a single instruction. So even back in those days, comparisons are very difficult to do. So I think actually taking an actual case where you're using the CPU and you're doing something quite intense and showing that and dis describing that, I think that's a fair way of, of showing how well it performs um, comparing against other microcontrollers, well, this microcontroller, in my opinion, certainly outperforms a lot of other microcontrollers because you can do so much in hardware.